Uh, good afternoon, my name is Dragana Nikodinovska. What I will present today is joint work with uh, my colleagues Matthias Kezo and Felix Musgens. The title of the presentation is Short Term Solar Photovoltaic and Wind Power Generation Forecasts uh, Using Elastic Net in Time Varying Forecasts Combination. Allow me to start with the agenda of what's going to follow. The first item is the research question and also I will outline the motivation behind our research. After that I will outline the data and describe our uh, data pre-processing technique. After that I will describe the methodology we are using uh, in order to arrive at the, em at the empirical results and I will end up with some conclusions. So our research entails forecast combinations in the field of renewable energy, namely we forecast solar photovoltaic and wind feed-in, that is the main goal, and uh, we would like to reduce the forecasting errors as much as possible. Uh, for that purpose, we are um, applying the elastic net methodology to obtain meta, meta forecasts for PV and wind data. Uh, first of all, meta forecasts are proven to be superior to individual uh, forecasts. And secondly, the elastic net methodology is tackling the issue of multicollinearity between the individual forecasts. One of the main um, questions of interest is here whether such combined data head forecasts for PV and wind feed-in would outperform individual forecasts as well as other benchmarks such as for instance the simple average. What is uh, the main motivation behind our research? Uh, net electricity generation from uh, renewable energy sources in Germany has increased from 19% back in 2010 to above 46% in 2019. So the precise renewable energy sources uh, feed-in forecasts aim to reduce the uncertainty related to these variable energy sources and also at the same time ensure system stability, especially in systems with uh, high shares of renewables. Uh, the feed-in forecasts of renewables have several users, uh, first and foremost uh, PV and wind plant operators which use the forecasts to minimize the deviation between forecasted and produced energy. Secondly, system operators who use um, the, the forecast to determine the reserve requirements and to manage their balancing groups and also traders use such forecasts to optimize their trading activities. So uh, the data for photovoltaic and wind uh, generation is obtained in cooperation with 50 Hertz, which is one of the four German TSOs located in the east part of the country. In the control area of 50 Hertz, approximately 25% of total photovoltaic installed capacity can be found and approximately one third of uh, wind capacity. The data is covering the period um, 2012 to 2018 for PV and 2010 to 2018 for the wind. Also, the data is uh, gathered in quarter hourly intervals, totaling approximately 245,000 realizations of PV fit in in megawatt and approximately 315,000 realizations of wind fit in. So they had PV and wind forecasts available at 9 a.m. are provided by a six or seven different forecast providers. In our data, this is designated as F1 up to F7. And we also have information on a combined forecast by 50 Hertz, which is called K in our data. Now we have arrived at the PV uh, data structure. As mentioned, it goes from the years 2012 to 2018. 
and HRPV is actually the realization of photovoltaic fitting. Uh, KPV is the combined forecast by 50 Hz. F1 to F6 include the day ahead PV forecasts as provided by the six different forecast providers. Here dark blue indicates that the data is complete for the whole year and light blue indicates that the data is only partially available. As we can start for PV, um, at the beginning only two forecasts uh, were available, whereas the number increases up to five in 2015. However, by 2018 the number is reduced to three forecasts only. Now let's have a look at the wind data structure. We can also see it's not uh, stable throughout the, uh, the period here for wind. We have two additional years, so we have from 2010 to 2018. Similarly to before, HR stands for the re realization of wind feed-in. K wind is the combined forecast by 50 Hz. F1 up to F7 are the day ahead forecasts and um, dark blue again indicates complete data and the light blue indicates only partially available data. For wind at the beginning four forecasts were available, the number increased up to six in 2014, however in later years the number is reduced to three forecasts. Now let's have a look at the precision of the individual PV uh, forecast, so F1 up to F6. Here on the y-axis we have the root mean squared error, uh, which is in megawatt, and on the right-hand side we have um, installed capacity also measured in megawatt. Uh, during the period an additional 40% uh, uh, capacity was installed um, in the re region of 50 Hz. However, in the forecasting errors we also see an upward trend, so it was difficult to catch up with the installed capacity. So uh, here we can see that um, F2 in orange is the forecast with lowest forecasting errors uh, throughout uh, this period. The next slide shows also the precision of the wind uh, individual forecasts. Uh, here, largest error is observed for um, the forecast number four in, in the, at the beginning of the period. Here, F5 um, in darker blue is the most precise uh, wind forecast. In addition to the changing availability, the, the data also has um, several types of errors. So the dynamic data pre-processing as an important step to address this issue. So we check both uh, the day ahead forecast, so the 96 values uh, in step one, as well as the historical forecast, so the past 15,780 observations, and this is step two. Due to time limitations, only step one is here represented on the slide. So we ch check the first forecast uh, for day D plus one. First we check for the number of impossible values. If it doesn't violate the criteria we define, we checked for the number of repetitions of zeros. However, if the criteria are violated, the forecast uh, is disregarded and we are checking the next forecast. Uh, as I said, we, we check the next the number of repetitions of zeros. We also check for number of repetitions of values and if they don't violate the criteria we specifically predefined, we also check uh, for the number of NAs. If we proceed down this path, um, so in the end we interpolate impossible values and NAs and we move to step two, which is the check of the historical forecasts. A 
the methodology that we resort to it's called elastic net method which represents a type of regularization when we have highly correlated predictors such as the case of individual forecasts one important task is to decrease the model complexity that is to deliver a parsimonious model and at the same time to reduce the multicollinearity so the regularization or shrinkage is actually the process of shrinking the estimated coefficients leading to lower variance of the coefficients this process is beneficial for the predictive performance of the model as it reduces the forecasting errors so the elastic net model is a special form of a regression and offers a trade-off between the regio rich and lasso regressions and very importantly it prevents overfitting this slide shows the objective function of the elastic net estimation so here we try to minimize the squared distance between uh, the observation and the prediction and we have an additional uh, penalty term here the betas are the the beta stars are the optimal model coefficients phi t tilde are the m different individual forecasts uh, for each t from the historical time frame phi t are the associated realizations of pv and wind power so the first term here in the bracket is actually the lasso penalty and the second term is the rich penalty when we have lambda equal to zero the objective function uh, defined in one leads to simple ordinary least squares regressions however in our case we find lambda to be greater than zero and statistically significant so we would have uh, this additional penalty term in the estimation if alpha is one we end up with a pure lasso estimation and on the other hand if we have lambda alpha sorry equal to zero we end up with a pure a rich uh, method a lambda is selected via cross validation which is a data driven method optimizing the out of sample predictive accuracy so once the beta coefficients are estimated we can easily com obtain the combined meta forecast uh, phi t tilde as a combination of the individual forecasts here a phi tilde i t are the m individual forecasts at time t and uh, beta zero is the intercept and the beta i t's are the combination weights the determination of the coefficients is based on historical information available af up to the time point uh, t less than t prime or we use approximately the past 165 days to estimate the coefficients for the next day we move the rolling window by 96 values to the right and we re-estimate the combination weights now we have reached the empirical results firstly i would like to discuss the forecast combination weights for photovoltaic uh, the weights are on the epsilon axis and on the x-axis we have the remaining days for 2012 to 2018 as previously discussed uh, w2 is actually uh, the weight of the best individual forecast f2 and we can see that throughout time it obtains the highest uh, value in the combination what's also interesting is that we can see for instance for w1 when we have days when for instance by mistake uh, zeros were delivered for the whole day then this um, individual forecast obtains zero weight in the combination also interestingly in 2018 uh, forecast uh, uh, six and forecast one do not have enough history to be included in the combination so we end up in a period where only one 
forecast is entering the combination. Similarly for wind, uh, we can see that the best individual forecast W5 has highest weight throughout the period. About the precision or the forecasting accuracy of photovoltaic forecasts at the annual level, we can see that in this table, so we have the year, we also have information on the average feed-in included in this table. Uh, we also have uh, info on the average number of used forecasts for the combination and we have the root mean squared error again uh, measured in megawatt. Here Delnet is the forecast um, obtained with the dynamic elastic net with dynamic data pre-processing. SA stands for the simple average forecast combinations in which in individual forecasts obtain equal weight. So if we have just two forecasts, each of them obtains a weight of 0 0.5. K is the combined PV forecast by 50 Hz. And F2 is the best individual forecast. As we can see, the Delnet outperforms uh, both the simple average and F2 in all years. And on average, the forecasting year error for all years is 245 megawatt, which represents 2.7% uh, of installed capacity. Now we can have a look at the wind uh, forecast's accuracy for the years 2010 to 2018. Similarly to before, we use the same uh, nomenclature, so SA is the simple average, K is the 50 Hz combination, Delnet is our forecast, and F5 is the best uh, wind forecast. Here the average uh, forecasting error for wind is 611 megawatt, which represents approximately 4.1% of installed capacity. What are the main conclusions? Uh, forecast combinations with the dynamic elastic net, including a data pre-processing, uh, Delnet combination outperforms the simple average as well as the best individual forecast benchmarks for wind and also for PV. So for, for PV, uh, Delnet has root mean squared error which is approximately 13% lower than the simple average combination and for wind Delnet has a root mean squared error which is 8% um, lower than that of the simple average. The Delnet uh, forecasting model has been successfully applied to both PV and wind and could have a wider use for individual power plants, um, systems, regions as well as other countries. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention and you can see here my contact details in case you have any further questions.